Hello everyone, I am Prasad from the Structural Guide. Today we are going to discuss about written word failures. Please subscribe our YouTube channel, you may get the notification on new videos. Written word design. When we design our written word, we consider two main factors, stability analysis and ultimate limits design. Under the stability analysis, we check the service building state requirements. And the ultimate limit states also, we check the ultimate limit state stability requirement and the ultimate limit state reinforcement design and st structure requirement. Under the serviceable limit state, we check the overturning sliding bearing source stability. Uh, under the ultimate limit state, we check the stability and reinforcement design. If we further discuss uh, about the about this, uh, how we fail the routine words. So there may be two kind of failures, stability failures and structural failures. Stability we consider overturning, sliding, bearing and slope stability. Those, any of those could lead to failure of a retaining wall. Then the structural failure. Structural failure in the sense that may be bending failure, may be shear failure or any other failure caused by the cracking of the wall. Let's discuss about each type of failure in detail. Overturning failure. Now, uh, overturning in the overturning, we consider a fact of, sa fact of safety about 1.5. This may vary depending on the type of design you consider or based on the specification of the project and based on the importance of the structure, etc. So, what are the reason, main reason for the failures? Before moving to that, we'll see how the loads are applied on the retainer. You can see here the retaining wall when you have the field there. So th there will be lateral pressure on the wall. This lateral pressure caused the retaining wall failure. It's rotate about this point and fail or, or, or rotate about this point and overturn. So what are the main reasons? First thing could be the inadequate width of the base. If you have inadequate width there, lesser now there's a counterweight, the counterweight will be there on this part. So then the inadequate width of the base could fail because this lever arm reduces, but this lever arm remains the same, but this lever arm may reduce. Calculation errors may be a reason. Incorrect active pressure estimation. Now this pressure of the on the retaining wall is by the active pressure. Active pressure is Active pressure coefficient multiplied by the density of soil multiplied by the height. It's a triangular pressure applied on the wall. It has to be estimated correctly. So this is active pressure variations. Okay. So this this pressure we have to estimate correctly. Active pressure is based on the soil type and the friction angle. So those correct estimation will lead to the correct stability checks. If you haven't estimate or if you assume it incorrectly, the lateral load will be different, lateral pressure will be different, then there may be failures. Then the increase in the fill height. There may be increase in the fill height than we expected. Then the pressure will increase. That cause failures. Increase in the design load unexpectedly. This is also kind of thing that uh, that uh, slope stability, slope uh, increase the additional fill or putting additional fill. Maybe there may be additional loads on this. Now someone build a structure there. There will be a surcharge load on this area, so it will affect the retaining wall. So likewise, uh, there are reasons for the stability failure. Sliding fail. Sliding failures, as you know, as name implies, the sliding of the retaining wall. This move to this. This is also caused by the uh, reason that I mentioned previously. Now, how do we prevent? Now, sliding is prevented by the friction of the base, and also we may provide shear keys that develop a passive pressure when 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 shear is there. That could resist now if we have a retaining wall like this if you put the shear key if you this if this move to this way the shear key has a passive resistance then with that we are safe so these are the two components that provide the resistance that is friction of the base and the shear key 
is the thing that stabilizes the retaining wall. Now, inadequate base resistance or the inadequate passive resistance of the shear key could lead to the siding failure. Now, another thing we want to mention here, if you build a retaining wall on a rock surface, there are two benefits. We have the friction, that is the uh, usual friction set by the base. And, and, and uh, in addition to the friction, there may be a cohesion between the rock and the concrete. This cohesion resistance also will support to the uh, sliding resistance. The friction, friction due to the friction, we get the resistant into friction angle. Re resistant into the friction angle, the resistance for the friction is given by that. Then cohesion, resistance by the cohesion will be given by C into A. C is the cohesion and the area of the, the area of the base is given by the A. So if we if we can find the cohesion between rock and the base in such a situations, we can get the cohesion also as a resist as uh, to improve the enhance the uh, sliding resistance. That is only for the rock, but normally rock we only have the friction, so we have to consider those in the design. Bearing failures. When soil pressure exceeds the allowable bearing pressure, this will could fail. So how 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 does the pressure apply on a, on a base retaining? So this is a typical retaining wall. You have a, a lateral pressure like this, then the pressure under the the uh, base will be like this, right? So here the pressure will be higher than there because due to the lateral load, the pressure will be high. If you build this retaining wall, if you build this retaining wall at, on the ground, the allowable stress or the allowable bearing capacity will be there. So if it exceeds the allowable bearing capacity, there will be a bearing failure. So we have to be keep in mind when designing the retaining walls. This check should be this check checks need to be done. So if we done this check correctly, there won't be a bearing failure. Other than exceptional event like increase in the loads on the on the retaining wall unexpectedly or design errors, maybe there are those. We have to be Avoided. Slope stability failures. What is slope stability? You can see here these are the these are type of kind of retaining wall use some anchored method to stabilize these retaining walls. So what is the slope stability? Slope stability is part of the which is going to fail like this. So so we, though we have continuous anchored here they are not effective we have protected by this area we have protected the failure of this area but slope failure course along this line so stability failure so they, we are not safe there generally in in slope stability analysis should be done in a when 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 tall retaining walls are designed Smaller retaining wall, this more won't be an issue. But when we have a high slope, or when we build the slope retaining wall on the slope, in a such a situation, we have to check the slope stability. We have to find the minimum factor of safety for these wedges, and it should be maintained within limit. That's maybe 1.5, or else that that is that is specified by the specification or relevant standard. So. As a precaution, if you find this uh, this line or min the wedge that provides the minimum factor of safety, then if you know the location, we can extend these anchors there. Otherwise, it will fail. So, if we if say this is the line, we give the minimum factor of safety one. Other lines we provide 1.6 or, or or more. So, the, if our factor safety 1.5 and this is the line provide the factor safety 1.5, these lines should be extend beyond this to avoid this kind of failures. That has to be considered in the design. The final last thing that the structure could fail is the structural failures. Inadequate reinforcements design, inadequate section capacity could lead 
uh, structural failure when there are high load applied if the section is not adequate then there will be a pain mistakes in the design incorrect estimation of the lateral load as we discussed previously also could lead to the failure because a particular section have a particular structural capacity based on its section thickness and its reinforcement these failures may be or in the bending or it may be in shear so we have to provide adequate reinforcement adequate section thickness and adequate shear links if shear is critical those things we have to be keep in mind when designing a retaining wall right today we are discuss about the retaining wall failures so we spoke about what kind of failures could occur how they occur how we can minimize those failures how we avoid these failures let's meet on new video thank you very much